Hello and welcome to our St Matthews online service. My name is Amber and I am a placement student with St Matthews. And whether this is your first time with us or whether you've been here right from the beginning, I just want to say a big welcome. We've got lots of great things in store today. Um, we're thinking through what it means to come and follow Christ. So I'm looking outside my window right now and I can tell you it is raining, but it is also full of so much colour. This season is a bit like that, isn't it? We see so much beauty around us, it's getting cosy, but it's also getting darker and a lot wetter here in Bristol, if, if I'm perfectly honest. This season can be full of so many ups and downs in this present time. And I wonder how you're feeling sitting here this morning. The great thing is that we can bring however we are feeling to Christ and worship him. And my prayer and my hope this morning is that however you are feeling, that you will be encouraged today by the hope that we have in Christ, that he is doing something in the world. And what a joy it is that we get to come and be a part of that. So today we have some exciting things in store. First of all, we're going to share some family news. Then we're going to worship together. Then we're going to have our Bible reading, followed by Gabby bringing us um, a word. And then we are going to pray together and then finish in song. So let's get straight in there and get stuck in with some family news. So as we start, we're thinking about Alpha. So Alpha is a great time to come together and to ask questions about God and faith. And um, as we kind of think about that, um, Emily, one of our amazing students at St. Matthews, has given us a video, a little update on how she's going, as well as her experience in Alpha. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Emily. Hi everyone, I'm Emily and I'm a student at the University of Bristol and last year I went to an Alpha course. I joined because one of my friends was interested in becoming a Christian and wanted to know more about Christianity and what it means to be a Christian, but I'd 100% recommend it to anybody regardless of how long they've been a Christian for, because you really get to dive deeper into questions of your faith and maybe even questions that you hadn't thought about before or hadn't given proper reflection to. It's a really welcoming environment and you break off into small groups so you really get to know people at your church better and you build a really deep connection with these people and it's a really safe environment to question parts of your faith. Um, I really enjoyed it and I'd really recommend it to anyone who's thinking of going. Thanks so much Emily, always such an encouragement to hear from you. So unfortunately, our last Alpha course was cut short due to lockdown. But if you're a part of that course, um, fear not, we are going to be finishing that off shortly. So do be in touch with the church office or find out more information at stmatthews-bristol.org.uk. But if you were inspired by Emily's words of what Alpha was like and you want to give it a go, you want to ask questions about faith and who God is and find out a little bit more, um, then I really encourage you in January, we're going to be having a new Alpha course. So do be getting involved with that and um, also um, be inviting people, thinking about who you can be inviting. Um, yeah, start thinking about that now because Alpha is brilliant, really good to get involved. Um, talking about online, um, do be looking at our online um, YouTube channel. Um, all links can be found on the website. Um, there's also King's Kids stories being put up there by John every week. So go there, listen to a story, um, be inspired. Young, old, have a go. So um, first off, we're going to start our worship this morning. Um, that's all of our family news. Um, but before we start off our worship, um, we're just going to take a few moments just of quiet. So where you are, I'm just going to invite um, the Holy Spirit to be with us um, today. So dear Lord, thank you that you are here. Lord, may we know your presence wherever we are. Thank you for this family. Thank you for what you are doing. And we just pray that you would be with us today as we worship you. Amen. So Aiden is going to come and bring us a song. 
called As I Follow You. It is one that he has actually written. Um, so why don't you just take some time just to reflect on his words. Um, and they feel really apt for today. So let's worship together. Your heart I 
always follow me as I follow you. Thank you so much, Aidan. What beautiful words. Thank you for leading us. So now we are going to come just to a time of reflection where we can think about our weeks and bring them to God. As I said earlier, this season can be one of such light and dark. And we want to give it all to Christ and say, Lord, um, would you do this week with me? Would you show me um, where you have been at work? So yeah, we're just going to do that together and just spend a little bit of time just reflecting on this past week. So let's do that now. Lord, we thank you that we are never alone. Lord, that you want to do it with us. Lord, the good and the bad, you are there through it all. And God of glory, would you touch our lips with the fire of your spirit, that we with all of creation may rejoice and sing your praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now Jackie is going to come and bring us our reading, which is found in John 1, 35 to 42. So if you have a Bible with you, why don't you open it and follow along? Um, and then Gabby is going to come and bring us a reflection on the passage. And then after that time, there will be a time of reflection, a song to really um, let God speak to us and um, through the words that have been shared. Um, and then we are going to have some prayers led by Simon. So, Jackie, handing over to you. Thank you so much. The reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 35 and reading through to verse 42. John's disciples follow Jesus. The next day, John was there again, with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. And turning round, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus called his first disciple, he called one of them a rock, or pebble actually, Peter. If you had some disciples, what would you call them? I think my disciples would be the gabsters, perhaps, or uh, gifts of the gab, and we could all work together as a little crew. Um, it, it seems like a fun idea, doesn't it, having people that uh, follow you and listen to your every word and, and take what you have to say down. A bit like um, when you go to hospital and you, you're sitting in your hospital bed 
and there's a doctor following around with all the students and they're all like scribbling ferociously about whatever he says, you know, this woman has a temperature, oh, this woman has a temperature, you know, whatever. Um, but what does it mean uh, to be a disciple? What does it mean when Jesus calls these people? What does it mean for their lives? This is incredible. In John 1, 35, we see John, the Baptist, standing with two of his disciples and he looks at Jesus as he walks by. You know, picture the scene. Uh, and he says, behold, the Lamb of God. And after that, those two disciples followed Jesus because what John was saying had such authority that they believed him. Behold, the Lamb of God. And Jesus saw them following and says, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? Well, they weren't seeking where he was staying. They were just seeking him. They wanted him. They wanted relationship with him. They wanted to know about him. Like their doctor with the students following after, they wanted to know everything that there was to know. They were seeking uh, to spend time with him and to get to know him better and to get to know what he was teaching better. And so he came. So they said, come and you will see. I think that's the first challenge today, isn't it, offered to us? Come and you will see. You want to know Jesus better? Come. Come and you will see. Spend time with him. Read his word. Talk to people about him. Come and you will see. So they came. And they saw where he was staying, he says, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we found the Messiah, which means the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, so you are Simon, the son of John, John. you should be called Cephas, which means Peter. They saw, they followed, and then they brought someone else along. Andrew was the first evangelist that we see. He brought someone else. So first of all, come, come see, come look at Jesus. What is he like? You know, get to know him better. Secondly, bring someone else. You know, bring people along. Tell them what's going on in your life. Jesus did this. Somebody told me um, that uh, they'd been healed the other day, um, that they'd had a problem and... Um, and then they were prayed for and then they had a healing and it was making their lives better again. And you just think, yes, yes, I want to tell people about that. Obviously, I'm not telling, you know, who the person is because that their private matter. But actually, the fact that I've seen somebody healed in the last few weeks is just great news because God is on the move. God is working and he says, come to me, come to me. I so long to come to you, Jesus, in everything, with everything. And that's the challenge to all of us, isn't it? Come to me. And the third thing Jesus does is he changes his name. So you are Simon, the son of John. You, you will be called Cephas. He changes his name to be Peter. You will be the rock. And for those of us that know the Bible a bit, we know that the rock is what Jesus says he's going to build his church on. Little pebble Peter, tiny, you know, one person, but yet he built the church on Peter. Peter was the, the first sort of bishop of the church, I think. The founding, he's one of the founding fathers of our faith. But it's a pebble. You know, he's a rock. And that's what he changed his name to. I wonder if Jesus was going to give you a name, what would it be? Would it be faithful? I think in my case, it would be washing machine or dishwasher. You know, these are the things that I do at the moment. I dishwash and I washing machine, you know, and hang wet washing. Or perhaps it would be a bit better. Maybe it would be nurturer or um, house maintenance or something like that. But what is it that, that uh, Jesus can see in you, that he's calling out of you, that he's drawing out of you? Are you going to be somebody that a church is planted on? You know, are you going to be the person that stands out and says at work, hmm, I think things could be done a bit differently here. How can we do this differently? How, how can we make this culture more Christian? How can we make this place a better place for people to work? Or perhaps, um, you know, how can my bowls club be a nicer place to be? 
less backbiting in the bowls club, you know, whatever it is that God, what is God calling out of you at this time? But it all starts with us coming, coming to Jesus. That's where it always starts, doesn't it? Coming to Jesus, sitting at his feet, coming to Jesus, giving him everything and sitting before him and coming. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's a very simple thing that you've invited us to do. You invite us to come. You invite us to come to you. You invite us when we're weary and burdened to come to you. You invite us when we're strong and vibrant to come to you. And today we pray that we will come and see the good works that you are doing in our lives. We pray that we will come and see what you have for us. And we pray that as you work in our lives, that you will give us a name and that we will know our name and that we will see you do amazing things through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In our prayers today, we reflect on the reading from John, where Jesus asks, what are you looking for? As we pray, when I say, Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, please respond, may we find it in you. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, autumn hardens, the evenings darken and the weather chills us. The pattern brings more changes to get used to on top of all the changes we've collectively and individually experienced this year. This changing context takes some getting used to, and some of it is unsettling, worrying. It makes us ask questions. What can we, what should we do? What does the future hold? How will we cope with the new changes and new challenges? But Lord, we give thanks that our faith is in you. We have questions, wishes, needs and desires, some small and some very, very big. And when we seek, we find all we need in you. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. We pray for the church around the world, for our Christian brothers and sisters, Diverse and different, doing just fine or facing immense challenges. Together, alone, in person and online, all in one common faith, all finding strength in the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. We pray for the United Kingdom. In this time of unanswered questions about so many important things, 
that love, compassion and justice will endure as the way that we follow. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. We pray for our church community here at St Matthew's, for our endurance, for our collective presence as a place of faith, for all of the individual acts of care and outreach that happen because of this place, every day of every week, for finding of faith, for deepening of faith, for new arrivals joining our topsy-turvy journey, to learn from us and to teach us for every and each member of this church family. We pray today especially for our playgroup, with thanks that they continue to be such a dynamic and inspiring part of this church. For the children who come, for the parents and carers who bring them, for the staff team whose love for playgroup goes far beyond it being just a job that they do for the leadership of St Matthew's who support and nurture, for what we see of God's love in all of them. And we pray for our mission partners, the Sisters of the Church, for their untiring work, providing food and love to those in need in this community, for their faithful service to you, Lord. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. We pray for the sick and those in special need. Father God, we pray for ourselves and anyone we know who is struggling. Those with questions, fears, needs, with unmet desires. Help us, Lord, to take care of them, to listen to their needs, to provide what they seek, to know what to say and what to do. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. And we offer these prayers to God with thankfulness. Heavenly Father, our always changing context takes getting used to and is sometimes unsettling and worrying and makes us ask questions. What can we, what should we do? Can we do this? Can I do this? But Lord, we give thanks that our faith is in you. We have questions, wishes, needs and desires some small and some so very big. And when we seek, we find all we need in you. Lord, as we seek what we're looking for, may we find it in you. Amen. And we conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much, Simon, for those prayers, and thank you, Gabby, what a word. What a privilege it is to follow God and to see all that he is doing. What a joy that is. Um, and we are going to say a final prayer together. Um, but what I would ask you to do is maybe put out your hands as an act of surrender to him. These words that I'm about to say, this prayer, is pretty powerful stuff. Um, and if after this service you want to say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to go. Let me see. I invite you to hold out your hands and say a loud amen at the end of this prayer. Lord, let our feet be a blessing. Let our hands be a blessing. Let our lips bless you. May we walk only in your way. May our tough be ever gentle. May our voices always speak your word. May our hearts beat out your rhythm. May our lives be given to you. May all we do bring glory to your holy name. Amen. 
And we're going to sing a new song now called God of the City, which proclaims God's goodness and his work in the world. So let's sing together. You're the God of this city You're the King of these people You're the Lord of this nation You are You're the light in this darkness You're the hope to the hopeless You're the peace to the restless You are for joining us this morning on our St. Matthew's online service. It's been a joy to worship with you. Now, if you have any questions about anything or want any further information, um, don't hesitate to look on our website. It's www.stmatthews-bristol.org.uk. So look there for any information that you need. Now, look also here on our YouTube channel every Sunday for a service. Um, and then if you'd like to visit us in person at St. Matthew's Kingsdown, um, we have a service every Sunday at 9.30.
So yeah, look forward to seeing you guys here or in person in the future. Also, do be thinking about our Alpha course, which is coming up in January. If you have any questions about faith, then this is a great space to come and ask them. But thank you so much for joining us um, and hopefully see you next week. Bye.